There's a new allergen in Monsanto's BT corn. What is BT corn? If you gather certain soil bacteria and you spray it on crops during times of infestation of certain pests, it will, the pests will eat it and it'll bore holes in their guts and kill them. It's called BT for Bacillus thuringiensis, the name of the bacteria. You can buy it at a garden store and spray it. And it says, do not take internally. Duh. But the biotech industry decided to give it to all of us internally. They took the gene that produced the BT toxin, made it more potent, inserted it into corn, and it's now in every cell of their BT corn plant, and it produces a toxin that drills holes in the guts of insects to kill them. When you spray the BT on, which they do even in organic agriculture, it biodegrades in a couple of days. It washes off in the rain. When you put it in a GMO, it's encapsulated. And it's thousands of times more concentrated. And when they expose the Bt toxin to human cells in a Petri dish, it poked holes in those cells, the exact same holes that it creates in insects. So we're eating the Bt toxin. In Canada, they took blood that was preserved and found Bt toxin was in the blood of 93% of the pregnant women tested. And in 80% of the cord blood, which means it was in the unborn fetus. The Bt toxin is toxic to red blood cells. How did the Bt toxin get into their blood? Maybe it poked holes in the cells, creating a kind of a leaky gut and got through those holes. Question, why would 93% of the pregnant women have BT toxin in their blood? Because it should wash out. It's not Mexico where they eat corn tortillas all the time. Most of the corn eaten in Canada, this was a Canadian study, doesn't have the BT toxin because it's highly refined. There's no toxin protein in corn syrup, corn sweeteners. The people who ran that study guessed that it might be the milk, meat, and eggs from animals that eat the Bt corn every day and has a, have a reservoir in their system. But there's another theory. There was concern that if we eat a GMO, genes that were inserted into that food might transfer to our gut bacteria or to our own DNA. So in the only human feeding study ever done on genetically modified commercialized food, which is crazy, was one meal. <laughs> they took people who had colostomy bags. They had their lower intestines removed, not for the study. <laughs> and they fed them genetically engineered soy, and they were surprised to find how much intact genetically modified DNA ended up in their, it was actually illostomy bags because it was supposed to be broken down during digestion because that's what Monsanto promised. But in three of the seven human volunteers, even before they were fed the meal, the gene that was inserted into the soybean that created Roundup resistance was embedded and integrated into the DNA of the bacteria in their guts. This was in 1998 in the UK, Hardly anyone was eating a bunch of GMOs, but three of the seven had it. We don't know if it's widespread, if we're colonizing our gut bacteria with GMO genes. Now this was, it's not that you create Roundup when you have Roundup resistance, you create a protein that allows Roundup to be sprayed on you and it doesn't kill whatever. But what if you eat corn chips from BT corn? It produces Bt toxin from genes in the corn chip, and that corn gene transfers to your gut bacteria and continues to produce Bt toxin 24-7. If we are producing Bt toxin in our own gut bacteria, and no one knows, that might explain why 93% of the pregnant women tested had it in their blood, because they may have been producing it inside their own guts. And because it's in the children, 
the unborn fetuses, now you have a whole poking toxin that can be in their brain because there's no blood-brain barrier.